Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I fall apart, and you're the one that guides my heart.
Jesus, I offer this Mass for the intentions of each one of you, especially of the parish of the awesome and the poor pastor Sebastian and Yesudas, and especially for 24 children who have prepared themselves to receive Jesus. I thank the parents, the catechism teachers, the priests of this place who have prepared and brought the children to the altar of God this morning. May God be gracious to bless each one of you in a special way today. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In my thoughts and in my words, in 
fear of living God. Grant that we may always conform our will to you and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and
from the letter of St. Paul of, of, to the Hebrews. Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold past our profession. For we have not a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sinning. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The word of God. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. And Jesus 
was seated along with them. He had twelve, and this parish has twenty-four, double the number. And at the party, Jesus said, I have something to say to you. All the way attentively focused at Jesus. As all our eyes are focused on this children today, he said, I have something sad news for you. They all looked at each other. What is the sad news is going to give us at this party? He says, I am going to die. I will be no more with you. They were sad. They started murmuring. He said, Look at me. He took out a loaf of bread, took it up in his hand, looked up to his heavenly father, said a prayer of thanksgiving, and shared among the twelve. Then he took the cup, raised it to the Heavenly Father, gave it in thanksgiving, and gave it them to drink. And then he said, I will be with you present in this form of a bread and in this form of wine as this is my body and this is my blood. And then he said the last sentence, do this in memory of me. My dear children and my dear parents and well wishers, that body of Jesus which was in the upper room, that body of Jesus which walked on the water, that body of Jesus which touched the blind, that body of Jesus which touched the lame, that body of Jesus who commanded Lazarus to come out of the tomb, that body of Jesus who entered the mother-in-law of Peter, touched her and she was healed, that body of Jesus which carried the cross and that body of Jesus which is hanging on the cross is the same body of Jesus which our children are going to receive after the prayer of consecration to the mouth of the priest. That is the same blood of Jesus which you are going to receive after a few minutes after the prayer of the consecration which will be given to you it will be the blood of Jesus. Our Jesus is saying Hebrew chapter 13 verse 8 says, Jesus was same yesterday, Jesus is same today, and he will be same tomorrow. That Jesus to which you are going to receive today. The first communion is a solemn moment, is a special occasion. When Jesus is coming down in the form of a body and blood, in the form of a small bread and wine, to be one with your body and to be one with your blood. It's going to be a first meeting between you and Jesus. He says it's not an ordinary meeting. It's an extraordinary meeting because the person whom you are going to receive is not an ordinary person. He is the Son of God, an extraordinary human being on earth. When in Rome, Italy, 100 years ago, Christian, if anyone came out of the first faith, they would be arrested and put inside the prison. No priest would celebrate Mass, no bishop would celebrate Mass, and all that happened 
was in the underground. Lot of people was already being arrested for professing their faith. And the communion was supposed to be sent to them. In the underground, Bishop celebrated the Mass along with his priest and people were all gathered like the Lord. After the consecration, distribution of the communion, Bishop announced, I need someone to carry communion to those people who are in the prison. And he waited. There was no response. One should have been said, we cannot send the priest to the communion. They will be arrested and will have no mass. We cannot send our outstanding members who bring us inside this underground. If they get arrested, we cannot have mass. And the bishop said, Who shall I send? He repeated a second time, Who shall I send? And from behind a voice came, Send me, I will do. Second time, Send me, I will go. There was a little boy of seven years said, Send me, I will go. The priest went to search the voice and he saw a seven little year old boy. He said, No, we can't give precious body. We can't give the holy body of Jesus in the hand of this little boy, seven years old. He does not even know what it is. He does not know the meaning of it. He does not know what it contains. And he was refusing to give the Holy Communion. That is the time the Holy Spirit inspired the priest give the Holy Communion to this boy. And the name of the boy was Asus. He gave. He took the Holy Communion put it inside his pocket and it was on his chest and one hand hanging and he walked on the road. Tarsus was walking on the road, friends came and asked him, Hey Tarsus, what is inside your hand show? He said, I can't show it to you. Again they said, Tarsus, what is there in your hand? He said, I can't show it to you. Third time they asked him, Tarsus, show what is in your hand. He said, I will not show it to you. They punched him. They beat him. They kicked him. He fell to the ground, but he did not take out his hand out of his chest. One of his friends kicked him in such a way on his head. And that moment, Tarsus, who was carrying the holy body of Jesus, died on the spot. His friend then took out his hand and they saw nothing was in his hand. By the time Jesus had carried the soul of Tarsus into heaven. That's why his hand was empty. And that little boy dying. Today is called Saint Tarsus in church. He is the patron saint of First Holy Communion children. Do you know that? Your patron saint? Saint Tarsus is, is the patron saint of First Holy Communion children and also of the altar service. A boy of seven years old had the courage, had the ability, had the capability, in spite of not receiving the Holy Communion, had the power, had the courage, had the zeal to take Jesus to people who was in the prison. It was inspired by God. God chose him to be a special child and to carry the body of Jesus. Today, my dear children, 24 of you has been specially chosen by God first, then by the priest of the church and your catechism teaches.
teachers and your parents to prepare you for this day to receive Jesus once Jesus comes into your life you are no more the same person you will no more remain the same child for when Jesus came to Jacobus he opened his heart he opened his house he welcomed him and Jacobus was no more the same person when Jesus went to Mary Magdalene she no more remained the same person when Jesus came to Samaria woman she no more remained the same person when Jesus went to the house of Peter mother in law she no more remained the same person your parents who have received the first holy communion are no more the same person and from today even when you receive Jesus you are no more going to remain the same person i want to tell you what a father told his son when he was going to receive the first holy communion i know your parents must have told you something or the other before coming to church on the on this days before receiving us first holy communion as a special message and this father told his son son you are going to receive the holy communion i want you to look at the holy altar and always remember what i say about it holy altar he said the first letter h he says come before god my son always in a humble way he says come with pride god will not listen to your prayer my son when you come to god be as humble as possible second he said oh my son remember be obedient to god be obedient to your parents be obedient to your elders learn what they teach imbibe in your life by being obedient to learn in pride nobody learns then he said l he says when you come to church listen to the word of god carefully listen to every word that is spoken by the mouth of the priest there may be some message for you which is meant only for you pay carefully for in listening to the word of god you receive healing you receive grace then he said why he said yearn desire to receive jesus as often as possible there is no bigger gift than receiving jesus every day then he said a adore jesus wherever in which of a form adore jesus give him the highest place the first place and the prominent place then he said l love jesus love your parents love all those people who bring blessing into your life t he said my son offer a prayer of thanksgiving for your parents for your dear and dear ones all those who are sick in your family all those who are suffering he says offer a thanksgiving prayer then he said he asks and you will receive you will come to know many problems of our family son whenever you go to church pray for our family pray for mommy pray for grandma pray for those who are sick and then he said the last letter r make a resolution that you will change your life you will be a better person what you were not yesterday today you will be a better person and this father tied a chain to the holy altar by giving him such a beautiful message that whenever he enter the church remember the holy altar my dear children you are going to receive jesus when jesus comes to a child 
he never comes empty handed today as you receive the first holy communion you should have the best form of prayer on your lips and whatever you ask it will be given to you for jesus has promised when my little children come to me do not stop them he always kept children to his heart he always made them sit on his lap and he always made sure that children always receive blessing and the prayer of every child is very very powerful for you god never disappoint children in their life so today you must have, have a special prayer when you receive jesus on your tongue when you go back when you kneel down you should have a prayer for jesus of all that you ask and my dear parents and well being wishes even you and i we have received the first holy communion god will count us more than the little children he will count us more double than the little children for you and i have a duty and a responsibility of teaching our children how to grow in faith how to grow in love how to grow in prayer how to walk with jesus and how to be in the presence of jesus if you are not able to give jesus to your child the journey is they are starting today you and i will fail as a responsible parents and fail as the promise what we did to the time of baptism your children have received three sacraments already the third they will receive today the baptism the sacrament confession and in few minutes they will receive the holy eucharist and maybe amongst some will walk up to be a religious nun or a priest i am welcome for jesus can touch anyone any time in his or her life this morning we are gathered here at this eucharistic table to thank and to pray god pray to god for choosing this frail young children for today they have become the heart of jesus is not that jesus who is the tabernacle which is more important it is a jesus whom we carry in our body becomes very very important and the jesus when a child carries today three people get blessed one is the baptist community we celebrate every time a first holy communion gets blessed the family with the child they receive gets blessed and the child is receiving also gets blessed there is a triple blessing in every first holy communion that we celebrate and today jesus is going to enter your house what a beautiful moment for he said in revelation 3:20 i come to the door of your house and i knock if you open your door i will enter and dine in today you have entered the door of the jesus he is going to enter your life and your family as he said to jesus he is going to say today to you i am going to be in your house from today forever and ever when the holy was asked what is the happiest day of your life and the holy answered the happiest day of my life was when i received my first holy communion this should be the deep day the important day the red letter day of your life not the day when you get married not the day when you go to the school not the day when you get your motorbike the day when you receive jesus i pray the god may bless each one of you may you always carry jesus in your heart as you are so well dressed and clean put white sign of purity let this dignity be in your life forever never appear before jesus not properly dressed as you have dressed and come so properly that should be every time when you enter the church because you are not receiving an ordinary person 
Never come with a half bag. Never come with any ordinary t-shirt, no. You cannot come to Jesus in a shabby way. You are not receiving any ordinary person. You are receiving the master and the author of our life who created heaven and earth and who created you and me. May God bless you and be with you forever and ever. Amen. We will kindly switch off these two fans and And we will light the candle for the first communicant. May I request all of you to please stand.
who is instrumental in the faith formation of your children, who helps bring Jesus to us, especially our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Archbishop, Thomas Pesuda, the priests and the religious and our Catholic teachers, we pray. Jesus, come in me and remain in me always. Jesus, come in me and remain in me always.
They might be your brothers and sisters might sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, your mighty Father. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect of your gift, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you.
see the miraculous prayer which he has taught all of us. And we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, all of us as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that with the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of the heart, the glory of your Son, Lord Jesus Christ said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
the intention of the masters. We pray that the church continue to sustain in all ways a sinner lifestyle as a sign of core responsibility, promoting the participation, the communion and the mission shared among priests, religious and lay people. Today is Mission Sunday. Remember all the collections, those the Archbishop House, and then of course move on to the initiator for the mission work in the world. Our country India also benefits from these contributions that we make. And so the Mission Society of India has given us calendars to sell and envelopes which we distributed last week. You may kindly uh, add and then you please drop those envelopes, envelopes in the box at the entrance of the church or also in the box in the five in front. It is held every day at 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. Kindly remember, recite the rosary at home as a family. A family that prays together, stays together. Most Reverend Thomas de Souza, our Archbishop, will confer the Sacrament of Confirmation on the 8th of December in our parish. There will be a Bible Convention from the 15th to the 17th November from 8.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. at St. Thomas's Church and the Rebecca House. Those interested, they kindly look for details on the church notice board. The parish priest will be out at Bandit Shrine for his annual retreat. This will be from Sunday to the 26th of this month. Reverend Father Sebastian Ashwada has gone to home on leave. Kindly keep Father in your prayers and also Father Austin who will be in retreat. Last Sunday's collection was Rs. 20,929. May God bless you all for your generous contribution. Man of marriage for the first time, Shivam Day, son of Subhash Chandra and Ratna Day, residing at Rishi Pankyu Chandra Road, and Elizabeth Anthony, daughter of the late Anthony Lona, and Pushpa Anthony, residing at Lashkar Ha, uh, Madhya Par. Man for the second time, Alex Subit Gomes, Son of the author Adoy and Snigda Junugo, residing at Neta J. Shubhas Sharani, to Alka Peter, daughter of David Peter and Violet Peter, residing at Picnic Garden. Firstly, remember if you are aware of any benefits as to why this marriage should not be solemnized in the church, you are bound with conscience to inform any priest of the parish. My dear brothers and sisters, already at the beginning of this Eucharist, we welcome Father Anthony Patrick Paul. I'd like to thank Father in a very special way because as soon as we approached him to be the main celebrant today, he readily agreed as he always does, pastorally is always available. We thank God uh, for his presence in our midst and we also pray for the new responsibility that he has, that the Lord will bless him and our blessed Mother lead him in this difficult office that we carry right now. And a big thank you to Father Orson, Father Isu, the Catechism teachers, sisters and parents who have prepared and brought their children to receive Jesus. It's a great day for the church, a blessing for each one of us. Thank you so much for preparing our children so well and making the liturgy so solemn and beautiful and meaningful. Thank you to the choir and the altar service. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that benefiting from the participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present day and prepare for the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. Kindly maintain the decorum that we practice and we request Father 
and can cause the distribution of disabilities. Next, Janis Theodore, Maria, Mar Maria Das, Jason Peters, Leanne Bearder, Nathan Andrews, Melvin Eric Gomes, Adiola Marker, Sashia Elizabeth Barla, Grayson Jeffrey Das, Emmanuel Mutu, Myra Carrivit, Vivan Nick Pillai, Glenn Anthony Hartley, Manda George, Rian Blaze Sarkar, Emmanuel Lal. Clara Nashkar, Edward Shaw, Shogun David Sarkar, Christina Mercy Agarwal, Rachel Shania Rosario, Rachel Renuka Raju, Karan Mitu, Sunday school uh, teachers, especially the first learning community teachers, for all the time that you have given, a lot of extra time I have to say, and uh, for all the trouble you have taken. The teachers have informed me that after the Eucharist, the children will go down to the conference room where they will get some uh, refreshments over there. Oh,